Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. This video is a continuation in a series of videos we're doing about creating accounts receivable invoices. In our first video, we just created a direct accounts receivable invoice um, in the, using the accounts receivable menu and the feature for add a new receivables invoice and we were selecting a payer and entering a amount that owed us, etc. and you can watch that first video. But now, in this video, I would like to show how you can actually create an invoice in accounts payable when you're paying bills to vendors and if you're paying a bill that somebody is going to reimburse you for, um, you can put it straight to accounts receivable as you're posting the bill or if you're paying a bill that somebody is going to partially reimburse you for, you can split the bill up and make one line for accounts receivable, which is what we'll do. We're going to pretend I clicked over here to post payables. I'm on the, on the menu for that, and I'm going to add a new payables bill. Please use the help buttons for learning about payables. This video isn't totally about entering payables bills and all the features. But this is one of the features, how you can create an accounts receivable bill directly from um, an accounts payable bill that you're entering. So we're going to play like one of our employees actually owes us part of our phone bill when we're paying the phone bill, that they're going to pay us part of it. And so we, instead of just posting the whole phone bill and then coming in and making an entry, um, for the part that they owed in accounts receivable, we can get it all done in one fell swoop here. So I'm going to create a quick bill because this is not about a job related bill, it's just our phone bill um, for the office. And for some reason, <coughs> we know that we've gotten a bill for $230.25 and that $45 of it is going to be owed to us by our employee. The department in the type dropped in, um, I could change the department if I need to for some matching up with this receivables that I'll be doing in a minute. But let's just go ahead and make this invoice date April 5th and pay like it's due somewhere near the end of the month. And an invoice number like I've shown before on videos about accounts payable when there's not one, like phone bills don't usually have one, I use six digits for the date of the bill. Now what dropped in for this vendor was a GL 8600 for telephone. And I'm going to, I've done the math, my bill is 230.25, and I know I'm going to do, be doing another line for $45. And the difference in that is um, 185.26. So this is the amount I'm just putting straight to telephone expense. This description dropped in because I have it set up as a default description for AT&T. So now what I'm going to do, we need we need to get the total to pay AT&T to be the 230.26. So I'm going to copy this line. And I'm just doing that so I can get the same invoice dates and due dates. But in this case, I'm going to select the GL number for our control accounts receivable account. Um, and I explained how a control account is set up on the chart of accounts in the first video. And you mark. Uh, which one will be your control account for accounts receivable. And because that's a control account that I selected for accounts receivable, CHS is detecting um, that it is the control account and it is open some more fields we'll see here in a minute. And it's saying since the accounts receivable control GL number was selected, the section for reimbursement has displayed. Please select a payer ID in the buy field then you may use the hyperlink to supply an invoice number to have the program supply a number or select one already associated with the payer job and department in the drop down list. This is a handy way to automatically include this as an amount due from the payor in receivables. So let's do that. Let's first of all, since we copied the line, this amount is here, but um, April owes us $45. And we might put um, A. Smith AT&T amount due. Something like that that's clear on an invoice that you'll give to the payor about this. Um, maybe you call it, you know, 
April amount due, which is for the month, which is funny because her name is April, but whatever. And the amount that she owes us, um, the portion of the phone bill that she's going to owe us is $45. Now in the buy field, I'm going to select um, a payer that we've set up for April Smith. Um, you will need to have the payer set up uh, first before you start this. In the payers list, you can't do it on the fly from here and there's reasons for that because of conflicting stuff. So you should set the payer up, follow the instructions about setting up payers and have the payer set up before you come in here to post this bill. Now I'm going to look to see if there's any other invoices just because that's what this drop down is for for April Smith for that same um, department and uh, job and there are no other invoices there. But I'm going to, so I'm going to go ahead and just let CHS apply the invoice number. So I'm clicking this hyperlink. And what this um, hyperlink does, AR invoices, lets you look at all other um, invoices posted uh, and open the full screen for searching. And I might look to see if there's, for some reason, there's any, this is payers with invoices. There's no other invoices for April Smith at all right now. Um, but you might want to be reviewing something else in accounts receivable just because. So that's all I need to do. Here's the total of my bill due to AT&T. I'm going to go ahead and submit this and this 23026 will show up in accounts payable. But this amount, $45, will also show up in accounts receivable as we'll see in a minute. So I'm going to click submit and I'm not paying this uh, AT&T bill yet. I'll do it in a big check run and so I'll post it as unpaid to pay later. And if I want to view the entries that CHS just posted, I can. You can see the two entries and that they total to 23026 and that one of them is to the GL account, accounts receivable, etc. That's just seeing the two entries posted, basically two accounts payable. But what we can do now is we can go over to our accounts receivable and um, on the home tab if you click accounts receivable you will open this accounts receivable menu and what I'd like to look at is review, edit, or delete, copy AR entries. Um, and let's go take a look down here. These are in payer order, the ones in black, and now we have April Smith showing up in accounts receivable, $45, um, and it shows that that was posted in the AP or accounts payable journal. So if I decided I needed to edit it, it's going to tell me that I need to go do that in accounts payable using the features there to edit the bill. You know, maybe I want to edit it, take it out of accounts receivable. The same if I click delete. Now if I had gone ahead um, after I posted that bill, I could have uploaded a copy of the phone bill if for some reason, maybe it's a, some receipt from a store, you could, you could scan and upload a copy or I could do that right now and use the upload features and attach it um, just for review to see what it is I'm billing somebody for. So that's, that's another thing we're talking about, about uploading um, things and attaching them to various accounting entries and I could attach something to this entry if I like. Um, but look here where it says view JE. That means you, you can view all the entries behind the scenes related to this particular entry and what CHS did with that accounting wise. So it looks for anything in the journal AP that had the same GL date and the same doc ID that I gave it, that invoice number. And all of these have that. And so you can see that there was an amount that went to telephone expense accounting wise. The offset of that went to accounts payable, um, which increased accounts payable. A credit to accounts payable uh, is an increase. CHS is using the control account for accounts payable trade to do offsets to all the original entries. So the original, other original entry there was accounts receivable trade and a payer has been supplied in the payer field and um, the amount of $45 has increased accounts receivable because the debit to accounts receivable increases it. And then accounts payable was also increased by the $45 for the very same doc ID. 
So you can see how that lands in accounts receivable. And if for some reason, we'll talk a little bit later about printing invoices, but let's just say I wanted to print just a little quick uh, invoice out for April Smith. I could do it. We're going to talk about setting up styles and things in another video. But I could do a little invoice and send this to PDF for sure um, when I do it. But you can see that there's a little invoice here that I could give to um, April Smith. So that's how you do it, um, how you get it to in, go straight over to accounts receivable from accounts payable so that I didn't post the whole phone bill for 230 in accounts payable and then come here and do a new receivables invoice for April Smith. It all just happened in one fell swoop there. Our very next video is going to be about how you can create invoices when you're um, doing a payroll, posting a payroll journal entry for an employee. Um, we could collect this amount back from the employee that we just did, and we could give them an advance if we like to that ends up in accounts receivable. So you'll see all of that in the very next video. And thank you for watching.